Thankfully, if you have any familiarity with uh, Roku interfaces in the past, like if you've had any other Roku device, whether it be Roku 2XS, Roku 3, Roku Streaming Stick, unless you had the old, old interface, which was like three or four years ago, which was a film strip interface, you should be very familiar with this new tiled interface. For those of you who are brand new to the Roku user interface, I'm gonna walk you through everything that you're looking at right here. So by default, you end up on this home screen, and it's just that, it is a home screen. It is a listing of all of your channels over on the right in a tiled grid interface. In the upper right-hand corner, right over here, you can see that there is a time and options. Now the time is very small, so it's not very useful. And the options, while it's there, it's grayed out at the moment. Now that's because my current left-hand menu, where I'm on home, I cannot do anything. However, if I use the arrow right there and bring it over to the channel listings, the options menu now lights up. And what that is, it, on the Roku remote, Hopefully that's kind of in focus. If not, there is the asterisk key right there. If you hit it, what it'll allow you to do is open up a submenu for each of the areas that you can do something with. Now, normally this is actually just for your channels. So what it'll allow you to do is rate your channels, move your channel, remove the channel, give them feedback on the channel, and close. So if you select move the channel, you will be able to move the channel wherever you like. And this is how you kind of arrange the grid pattern to where you want. Now, I'm gonna come over here to the Twitch. Uh, it also shows you version number at the top. So it's version one build 14. Now I plan to give feedback because this particular channel gives me several issues where it buffers and just drops. And this is where you let Roku know that, hey, the developer of this particular channel might need to do a little more work because it's good, but a little buggy. Now I'm going to come all the way back over to home for a second, just to bring it back because you notice over here, that big poster on the right hand side, that is a rotating ad. And that ad is always going to be there. It's always going to take up that real estate. Now this is, you know, something that Roku has moved to doing because, well, it is a, for the most part, free service. You buy the box and then all these channels are either free or subscription based and Roku doesn't make any money off of them. So it's got to make its money somehow. So you will notice that there are ads uh, for varying channels and different things. Uh, I did forget to mention, if you look, it might be a little hard to see, but right above above the Twitch channel right there, it will show you one of 24 channels. That's the total number of channels that I have. If I scroll up, you'll notice between Netflix, Amazon, Twitch, and 4K Spotlight, Plex Preview, and Roku Recommends, there's a little white line. Now that indicates the separation of the top of your list from the bottom of your list. So if you've got lots and lots of channels and you don't feel like scrolling all the way down like this, you could just quickly press the press the up button on your remote and get to the bottom of your list uh, in case you have way too many to scroll through. So we're gonna come back over to the left-hand menu here and we're back on home. You can get back to home by either pressing the arrow key when you're on the channels and that just brings you back there and leaves your grid as is or you can press the home button and that will reset your channels to the first tile position. So in my case, Netflix. So coming down the left-hand menu, you are going to be presented with my feed. Now my feed is a really cool Roku uh, option that allows you to select TV shows and movies that you want to keep track of. Now you'll notice my feed has a little one next to it. That's because Game of Thrones has uh, new episodes out. And granted, not at this time, but since I haven't checked in on this feed, it's still showing that, hey, there's some action that has taken place, in my case, new episodes. So if I highlight Game of Thrones and press the over button, it will show me, hey, Game of Thrones, you have Fandango, Amazon, HBO, Vudu, and it will give you prices next to them. So on Vudu, I can buy it for $2.99 an episode. HBO Now, I can watch it with subscription. And same thing with Amazon. Now, if you look at Amazon and HBO Now, Notice that there is a check mark to the far right of that selection, right next to the HD. So it is letting you know if it's HD or standard depth. The Amazon 
having a check mark means that I have that channel. Well, HBO Now, I do not have. I have HBO Go listed, which is part of an HBO subscription bundle. But if I select further, and let's say right here, bring it over, it will let me add the channel for the one that I don't have, or if I come to Amazon and select it, it's going to launch the Amazon app and bring me right to that specific show. And we're just gonna let that load up. So right here, you can buy the episode or what have you, little summary, everything. So I'm gonna go back home to the Plex main screen so that that's what my feed is. Now you'll notice that my feed no longer has the one next to it. That's because I took care of the action for Game of Thrones. Now, you can come and search by movies, TV shows, movies coming soon. So let's say I select movies coming soon and it will show me. Now these are things that are currently in theaters. So like, here we go, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It's still in theaters. You can see it shows you the poster there. It gives you a little blurb. If I select it using the OK button in the middle of the remote, it will allow me to follow this movie on Roku. I can view the full description. There is the full description. It's not a full description, it's a little blurb. But I'm gonna go back because I want to follow this movie on Roku. If I come back to my feed, once Guardians of the Galaxy becomes available, it will pop up with a notification. Now I can, now I can also kind of browse TV shows and movies that are currently out. So if I cheat and I say, okay, well, since I'm looking at Guardians of the Galaxy 2, if I wanna see Guardians of the Galaxy, the original, it, if I click on it, it will show me all the channels that it's available for, as well as you know pricing, HD, that little check mark whether I have the channel or not. You can also follow this movie on Roku. So again, if I select follow, it's going to show me updates from these particular providers or channels in my follow section. So, if there are no updates, nothing is going to show up. So like Game of Thrones showing up only showed up because I had not looked at it recently and here's a whole bunch of updates that have happened for it. So the My Feed is one of the big reasons that Roku is so powerful. It's because it searches all across any channel with no recommendation of, hey, you should go to Netflix because Netflix is better than Hulu. It doesn't care, it is just your streaming box. Now, I do use personally a app called Just TV, link in the corner there. Uh, so if you wanna use both in conjunction, really, really good. But if you don't and you just have the Roku, my feed is a good way to keep track of things. So coming down, we have the Movie Store by Fandango. Now this is another way that Roku makes money through partnerships. If you looked at my Roku 3 review for the user interface section, you'll notice that this was for MGO. So they have partnered now with Fandango on this particular user interface to have them be the go-to movie selection as well as the TV store. Now I'm not gonna really get into this because again, this is a rotating partnership, but if you selected Movie Store by Fandango, it will allow you to look at new to buy, new to rent, deals, so that's anything that's had uh, drops in price. My movie list, uh, again, I do not use Fandango, so there's nothing there. Uh, same with my movie library. If you use these services, these would be populated. Uh, and again, you, you just kinda go through and it has all of these different movies in here. Now, in some ways I could see why this is useful if you don't wanna use a red box, you don't wanna go out to the movies, you could rent them for a fee. Uh, same thing with the TV. You go in here, you show top, watch the list, movie library, all that. Uh, but again, this is a paid service. And you'll notice that at the bottom there, there is a you know two banner ads for HBO stuff that's not on Fandango, but they're paying Fandango to have their thing show up there. So in some cases, it is a little, uh, you know, about these services making money any way they can. Now, if you do not like the fact that these two items are there, I can show you how to remove them a little later. Uh, you have right here, News. This is something else that Roku puts in there. It's not terrible. Uh, it's powered by AOL.videos. And what this does is it will allow you to kind of view video snippets from all across the web. And they're not all from AOL. AOL is just the aggregator of these. So again, left-hand panel. Top stories trending, Armed Forces Day, politics, movies, uh, weird and viral. If we come down here to tech, 
that's what I tend to find most, uh, that's what I tend to find more interesting. Uh, so right here, here we go. Th this is kind of what's going on right now. Cyber warfare, wanna cry is going around right now. Uh, if I click on this by hitting the OK button on the remote, it will start after a little ad. And again, like I said, there are some things in here that are ad based. Now you'll notice that this particular snippet program in the upper right hand corner is from Zoom In TV. So it's not just from AOL. And this is interesting if you're just looking for like kind of highlights of the day, you're not looking for something in particular to watch. Again, if you're worried about real estate and you don't think you're gonna be using this, this also is removable and I'll show you how to do that a little later. Next is the search and again, this is why Roku is so powerful. It searches across all the channels that you have or don't have that may be in the Roku store. So if I come over, you'll notice that you kind of can hunt and peck your way using the Roku remote to select what you want. Uh, it does keep a history of what you searched for. So right here, right before filming, I did a search for Mark Hamill, so I didn't have to type it out. So here, if I select Mark Hamill, it shows you a little picture, a little blurb about him, and you notice it says 51 movies on Roku, 31, uh, 13 shows on Roku, and his birthday. If I go over more, it is going to show you, follow this person on Roku, so it'll be in that follow section again. So if anything that he does shows up on Roku, it will populate in that My Feed area. Or I can just scroll down, and here it's gonna show me all the things that he's been doing recently. So here, if I go Batman the Killing Joke, and I select over, it's gonna show me, again, this is something that he was in, and places where it's available. HBO Go on subscription, Amazon if you pay for it, Google Play Movies if you pay for it, Amazon Now. And again, it shows you if it's in HD, in this case, on HBO Go, it is not, but I do have that channel. On Amazon, it's $9.99, and it's to buy it, not rent it. It's in HD, and I also have that channel. So that's kinda cool with that. So it allows you, the search function allows you to search for both actors, movies, television shows. If you throw in something, uh, again, I'll do what I customarily do when I do these demonstrations. But if I select a movie title, there you go again. It shows you where you can get it. Uh, Fandango, you can rent it. Notice it says rent now. HD, and I do have that channel. Amazon, you can rent it, 299 HD. I do have that channel. And then that will also stay in my search results. Now, it's not popping up right now because I have information in there, but there you go. It's right there. Now, coming back over to the search results, you will notice that in the upper right-hand corner, the options choice is selectable. So if I hit the asterisk key, I can follow this movie on Roku, I can view a full description, or I can close. So that's just a little bit of extra that you can do. You can also come down and clear your recent searches. So if I highlight that and hit OK, voila, you don't see anything else anymore. And it, this is the screen you first see when you actually do a search. You can search for movies, TV shows, actor or director, channel, and games. And then it shows you down at the bottom, Roku will search across multiple channels. So anything that's in its channel store, it will try and find what you're looking for. Coming down to streaming channels. This is pretty much how you watch TV on the Roku. So coming over and selecting, it will show you, here's a channel listing. Uh, so right now it's featured channels. Here you have 4K UHD content available. So these are services where you can get 4K UHD content. Now you will notice that Netflix and Amazon as well as YouTube have little check marks in the bottom right hand corners. That's because I have those channels as part of my Roku channel list. These other ones, uh, Voodoo Movies, the Toon thing with, the, I don't know if that's a goat or a cat, but I don't have that so it's not checked. Back on the side here you have News and Notables, most popular. Again you see those check marks. Top free, this is probably where I recommend you look first because channels on here are either going to be totally free or ad supported. Ad supported meaning you may have to watch little breaks in between. And then search for channels. So this is just, again, another place that you can search for a particular item. 
However, it's only going to let you search for channels or game, and you are going to have to do the hunt and peck, unless you have the Roku app on your iOS or Android phone. Link in the upper right hand corner for my review on the Android phone, which will allow you to use a keyboard to type out what you're looking for instead of hunting and pecking. And again, it's broken down even further John of genres, TV shows, games. Now, I'm going to be honest, the games that you're going to find on here are not great, and you do need to have a compatible remote in order to play some of these games. But realistically, they're just, they're really kind of like flash based games. You probably are going to actually find better games on your cell phone at this point than you will on something like this. Next, the cream of the crop. Settings. This is pretty much how you're going to set up and make sure that your Roku device is working correctly and the way that you want it. So, first on the list, network. So this is how you're actually going to get internet access to your particular Roku. If I click the over arrow again, you will notice that there is a check mark next to wired ethernet connection, which is how I have my network set up. If I wanted to do a wireless setup, I would just click over on the wireless and say set up a new wireless connection. What it would then do is search for all available networks that are close by. In this case, you could see FoamyHal and Pilsy. Those are my networks. The first two are 2.4 gigahertz networks, while Pilsy is a 5G net network. So again, the Roku Premiere Plus can do both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Now just keep in mind, if you do 5 gigahertz, you will get faster speeds but you'll have a shorter range. So just keep in mind where your Wi-Fi is in comparison to your Roku if you choose that option. In my case, it's the right above the TV. So I wouldn't have a problem with that, but since I'm that close, I might as well do a wired connection and get even faster speeds. Themes. Currently, you are looking at the default theme, this purple. If we come over, there are several themes that you can choose from. In this case, you see my themes. By default, you get the Roku default, this one, Decaf, Nebula, which is the more interesting of all the default ones. But then you come down into these themes. Now, these are themes that you can pay for in the theme channel, which I'll show you in a minute. But occasionally, Roku will have the themes for free, where you can snag them as like a channel plus or something like that and get extra themes for free. So in this case, I've gotten Zen, this winter one, Subaru National Parks, Happy Spring, uh, sadly sponsored by Claritin, but it was free, so it's there. And then you can select Get More Themes. If I select Get More Themes, it would take me to a page that shows you a grid of all the themes that you can possibly have. And some of them, including this uh, Zen one right here, you would see would cost you 99 cents. Now, if I come back to themes, you have custom settings. Custom settings, by enabling this feature, will allow Roku to put seasonal themes that override your current theme, only for a couple of days. Uh, there's Christmas, Halloween, Winter, Mother's Day, New Year's, things like that. It will temporarily override your theme with a seasonal one. Not terrible, but if you don't want that on, you just come over and uncheck that box. Screensaver, well, it does have a built-in screensaver because if you leave your TV on all the time, you don't want things burnt into it. So. Screensaver choices. You've got digital clock, an analog clock, default screensaver, mobile screensaver, which will take photos from your mobile phone if you have it paired. Photo collage, you need to have something attached to the Roku. In this case, you would need an SD card. National parks and celebrating spring. Now these are two screensavers that came as part of a theme bundle. So here you have the one for national parks and then Celebrating Spring as sponsored by Claritin. How fun. Uh, so you get to have that branding there. But they, they are other preview, um, they are other screensavers that you can have access to. Uh, by default, the screensaver kind of is, I don't want to say weird. They have updated it since my original Roku. So let's actually preview that. So here you're going to have like this sliding cityscape where you'll have notable icons in the background. Right there in the left hand side you could see something that's akin to Mary Poppins and popping up soon will be a thing that kind of looks like King Kong because you know branding and all that. 
But the one problem I have with this screensaver is you notice that ad kind of sliding across the screen. Um, I get that Roku needs to have ads to support some of their, you know, ventures. I get that. I understand that. And there's your King Kong popping up now. My problem is if you hit the OK button or the play pause button, which tend to be how my wife gets the screensaver to stop, uh, it actually will, if it is a channel that it's advertising, automatically add that channel to your channel list. Or if it's a TV show and you have that channel, it will bring you right to that particular item. And in some cases it is advertising Amazon and it's trying to get you to buy the particular thing. So I don't care for that in particular, but uh, as long as you use the arrow keys to get yourself in and out of the screensaver, you'll be okay. So just keep that in mind. Do not hit okay, do not hit play pause to exit the screensaver. Now you have wait time, you can disable it all together where it never shows up, or you can have a maximum of 30 minutes and a minimum of one minute. Five minutes is about my sweet spot where I like to have my screensaver pop up. Display type. Now, in this particular case, there are some options that I will not be able to show you because I have a 1080 HD TV. I do not have a 4K UHD TV or 4K UHD with HDR which would uh, give you some extra options. Now you'll notice that it says right above what I have highlighted that it requires an HDMI connection with HDCP 2.2. Uh, there's some DRM that's included with uh, channels on the Roku, sadly. So you better make sure that you have a compatible cable. Coming down to accessibility, uh, Roku does have accessibility compliancy things built right into it. Uh, also depends on the channel. So if you're on a channel that does not support these, you're not going to see them. But there are plenty of options that you have for channels that do. You can have caption mode off all the time, on always, or on replay. So kind of go in and select it. Caption style. There are plenty of options in here. I'm not going to go through them all because not everybody is going to need them, but if you in particular are curious about the captions and all of the fun things that you can set with the Roku, let me know and I will come back and I will do a special just for the accessibility services stuff. Here you have remote. You can pair a remote or you can check the battery level on your remote. But wait, what's this? There are two remotes listed here. One is saying 50%, the other is saying it's at 100%. Well, that is because I was able to pair my Roku 3 remote with Roku Premiere Plus. So what that allows me to do is have two remotes for the Roku. Now that's kind of cool because one remote can be on one side of the television or couch and the other remote can be on the other side. However, this also means and I'm going to bring you back home for a second. My old Roku 3 remote has voice search. So if I do a search, Star Wars. Well, look at that. I can use the voice search on my old remote with my new Roku Premiere Plus. So if you have a old Roku device that had voice search, you could technically use it in conjunction with your new Roku. So one of the negative points about the plus over the top tier is not having that voice search. Well, it does do the voice search, but you just need to have a compatible remote. Now, while I'm talking about the remotes, it, as I showed you before, it does have the quiet mode or you plug into that headset. Now, when you're looking at the Roku UI here, no matter where you are, if you plug in a headset to the remote, you'll notice on the right hand side there, it lets you know, hey, I noticed that you plugged something in and then you can toggle the volume on the remote itself. Now, the one thing that I was kind of hoping for that it does not do is even though it has two remotes paired to it, it does not let you listen to quiet listening mode on both remotes. Sadly, whichever the first one is that plugs into quiet mode is the one that you are hearing things through. However, you can control the volume for quiet mode on both remotes. So a little weird there. I kind of wish you could do it on both, but beggars can't be choosers. If you got an old remote, you could still do voice search if you like it. 
audio. Again, these are going to be the sounds that the Roku interface makes, those little click clicks and beep badoops that you hear. Uh, master volume, you could set a high, medium, low. Audio mode, uh, you can select stereo or just leave it on auto. Auto is, in my opinion, your better bet. Same thing with HDMI, you could leave it auto detect or you could start coming through these things here and you'll notice the image on the right kind of shows you, hey, based on your setup, your configuration, I can give you more speakers and if you don't know what you're doing, just leave it on auto detect. Night listening mode. Now this is something that my old Roku did not have. Enabling night listening mode will decrease loud sounds like explosions as you see there in the lower right and increase the soft sound so people talking and whispering. Now I leave this on all the time because I'm in a condo complex and trying to be nice and respectful of my neighbors and also don't want to constantly be turning up the volume on my TV, turning down the volume on my TV. It does pretty good, but it's not quite as good as I was hoping it would be. Uh, it does increase the volume of people talking or whispering, and sometimes you can kind of hear a little, I want to say hiss in the background, but you can tell that it's enhancing that particular audio. Uh, so again, not quite as good as I was hoping for, but it's kind of cool that it's there. So keep that in mind, especially if you're listening over the headset, uh, <laughs> explosions in your ears while having turned up the volume to hear people whispering, probably not too great. Home screen. So remember I said that you could hide the movie store and hide that news channel? Well, here's where you do that. Maybe I don't want to see the Fandango stuff. Hide it. Same thing with news. Well, it's useful, but I don't use it that often. Hide it. Coming back all the way to home. Well, look at that. My uh, left-hand menu there is nice and short. But coming back to settings, and next on our list is privacy. So here's some things that you need to know about. Advertising. By default, your limit ad tracking is turned off. So what this does is Roku kind of keeps track of what you watch, where you're looking, where you're going, things of that nature to tailor ads to you. Um, I kind of find that a little creepy and don't really want people, you know, advertising to me targeted. So limit ad tracking kind of makes it so you just see generic ads when you're in a channel that shows you ads or that billboard space. You can also reset your advertising identifier, uh, which will clear and replace your unique non-permanent advertising ID, blah, 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 associated Roku. Again, first thing I would do is come here, turn on this, and then if you did go anywhere, reset your tracking and then advertising identifiers can be reset. You hit OK, uh, and then it will reset anything that you may have done before you turned on that limit ad tracking. Now, here you have microphones. So if you have the enhanced remote like I do for my old one, uh, well, it's going to say, hey, channels want to access the microphone. Well, there are some channels that you can do uh, some things with using your voice. So you can say, prompt me each time a channel wants to use the microphone, always allow or never allow. All right, now I just have it on prompt, well, one, because I don't use that remote all the time or for voice commands. But uh, know that that is an option. If you don't want anything to have access, just make sure you select never allow. Same thing with channel permissions. Here we can reset all channel permissions. So if you happen to use or forget and say always for everything and you need to fix that, you say never or prompt, and then you come back here and say reset channel permissions. Uh, in this case, no channel permissions are set. You can see that in the little box in the right, but if I did have some, they would be listed there. You just reset them all. All right, last but not least, system. Uh, first one is about, I'm not gonna show you that because well, that has some private information in it, such as the email address that's associated with this Roku account. So we're gonna skip over that and come down to time. So here you have time zone, in my case, Eastern Standard Time. Clock format is 12 hours. You can set it for a 24 hour or you can turn it off entirely. Control other device, you have one touch play, which will allow you to, as it says right there, tell your TV to automatically switch its active source input on your Roku player uh, any, on any key uh, pressed on a remote. So you have to have a TV that will allow this function as well as a remote, uh, like a cable box remote, that will allow it to hop over to this. In my case, my TCL TV here cannot do that, but I just left it enabled because, well, why not? Language, just that. Do you speak English, Dutch, Spanish, French? Those are your choices. Pick one that suits you. 
Screen mirroring. Now, screen mirroring is important because it will allow you to kind of almost Chromecast your cell phone, smartphone, to your TV. But if you have it enabled, it also allows you to do other things. Uh, so right there in the lower right-hand corner, if you enable it, it will allow it to show web pages, videos, photos, music, etc. This is also very good if you are going to be taking your Roku to hotel rooms. Uh, so just if you want to do that stuff, you kind of have to make sure that it's enabled. If you don't want to, you can disable screen mirroring. System update, your Roku device will automatically check periodically for updates. However, if you want to force a system update or a check for a system update, you just come here, select system update, check now, I'm checking, it's going to come back and tell me, nope, your Roku player is up to date. Underneath which you can see the current software version and the build number, as well as under, right there to the left, uh, last time it checked and the last update that was made. System restart, well, that's, that's your system restart. If for whatever reason you need to restart your Roku, you can either do it by pressing the button under the Roku or you can do it through the user interface. Coming over there, clicking restart, not going to do that. Advanced system settings. Well, here we go. We've got factory reset. This is your nuclear option. This pretty much starts the Roku off again as if you took it right out of the box. So you're going to have to set up all those channels again. You're going to have to attach it to your Roku account. You'll notice that it will not allow you to do a system reset without putting in the passcode at the bottom, uh, which is very good. So in case you accidentally come here, you accidentally also have to pit, press four buttons and then OK. So five. Don't reset it unless you absolutely need to. Network connection reset. Well, sometimes you need to reset your network connection. You don't want to go through the Wi-Fi options. You just come over here, reset it, and it will reconnect to your network. Device connect. Well, this is, again, essential to have if you need to pair your remote. So if this was not selected, I would not have been able to pair my enhanced remote. You cannot do screen mirroring with it, or you cannot use your Roku player at a hotel. So. You kind of want to make sure that this option's on if any of those things sound like something that you are going to do with your Roku. And then here we have external control. So what network access is going to do is it's going to allow certain things to talk to the Roku. Now, by default, it is on default, and it could, uh, right down there in the lower right-hand corner, external control is enabled only on a private network address, so your home address and accept commands only from private network address. So anything outside of your network cannot control the Roku. So if my neighbors downstairs had a Roku and it wasn't on my network, they wouldn't be able to control it. Here you have permissive. External controls is enabled always, but accepts commands only from private network, network address, or same subnet. Disabled. Realistically, all you need to worry about is, is it on default or is it disabled? If it's disabled, you cannot use your Roku so just keep that in mind. I'm showing you this because it's there and in case you're interested. Uh, so last but not least, third party licenses will come across here and it's just pretty much the EULA that nobody ever reads. But pressing our home button brings us back to the home.